Everyone has come from somewhere. We're born into a family and begin the steps to becoming who we are. Now, some of you have great stories walking with your mom and dad growing up, but some of you don't. The truth is that all the things we experience as kids growing up, well, they shape us. And as we say here at Remedy, you can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. One of Backstage Pass's favorite bands, the band Red, is going to take us on a special journey on this episode. Each of the fellows have experienced different childhood seasons while growing up, and you and I have the privilege of getting a chance to see what they've learned. So sit back for this special edition on The Family. You've got yourself a Backstage Pass. Welcome to Backstage Pass, I'm Clinton Foppel. The people that have the most influence on us in life will always be our parents. It's almost a spiritual connection. Ask an orphan if their missing parents affects them and you'll see anger or tears. Ask a young daughter who's seeking wisdom from a mother on how to make choices as an adult and you'll see thankfulness. Our parents affect us big time, whether they're present or not. Uh, I mean... I've always been the kind of guy going through life just really emotionally and just kind of stable. Like I'm really, not, I can't think of anything like that's been like devastating. Where like maybe some of the viewers, you know, where they've lost somebody that they really love, and or you know maybe they've gone through an addiction or something. And just yeah, I've never really just kind of faced those things in my life. But you know, I've had. <clears throat> I remember one time we were uh, this camp we used to go to, in the summertime Camp Judson. Um, everybody, you know on certain days, I think it was like a Wednesday or something, halfway through the week, they would uh, <clears throat> they would send, um, they would give all the kids letters from their parents. They would send them letters every week. And I never got any letters from my parents. So I just, got, you know, it was just those times was, I felt like alone. I felt like my parents didn't love me. And my dad was a pastor at the time too, <clears throat> for most of my life really. And um, he was always working. So it just, it felt like, <clears throat> When I was growing up, it just felt like he was kind of distant um, emotionally from me. So it's like when I got into college, um, it's just trying to reconnect with him more. And, and, and even now, too, it's like he's kind of opened up for me. <clears throat> just looking at his family, I mean, they're kind of hermits. They don't. Uh, they, they never went to his uh, graduation, his high school graduation. They, they didn't go to his wedding. And, like, they never showed up to any, you know, they don't ever, like, leave their house. So it's like, that was the kind of household that he grew up in. It was just very emotionally disconnected. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, he definitely like made it out of that home as far as like, you know, having somewhat of emotion because his his brother is just, he's totally gone as far as emotions go. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I had to deal with that when I was growing up just, and you can see it now. It's like when when my dad um, first found out that uh, we had our, my wife was pregnant with her first child like he broke down in tears and it's just like when I see my dad crying it's just like it really like wells up inside of me just because it's like it's like I've almost like yearned for that so Mm -hmm. long and now that it's happening now that he's like he's opening up a lot more it's just it's like I can feel inside of me breaking down especially because I'm a father now too and I have those concerns too in my life it's like you know us being on the road just worrying about uh, my kid and him growing up and I got a, a two-year-old boy and a girl on the way and just you know making sure that I'm making those connections when I'm at home and emotionally with them. So. Now, although our parents affect us in big ways, sometimes positively and sometimes negatively, that doesn't mean we can't rise above it if we recognize it. Michael here demonstrates that although he and his dad didn't connect a whole lot while he was growing up, Mike was able to understand why his dad was the way he was. And so he made choices to develop the relationship. Now, Michael is choosing to be a different kind of father to his own children. 
as he parents his kids. But what do you do if you grow up with only one parent? Unlike these guys, growing up, I didn't really have a dad. My parents split up when I was six, and I locked myself in my room for two weeks. Uh, <clears throat> so growing up, I always, always dealt with not having him around. Um, just me and my mom, um, just working hard, work late hours, trying to support us and stuff. And I think, I mean, I found Jesus when I was 10 and then started playing drums when I was 13. And that's when I really started getting involved in church because I started playing drums at church like right away. So I was there every Wednesday, every Sunday playing drums. And I feel like having the church like that really shaped me. Like it made me who I wanted to be. All I wanted to do was be in a Christian band. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I just like being down in that valley, not having a dad there has always, always killed me. Even to this day, I still don't have a relationship with my dad still yeah. and he's not a Christian you can talk to him about it but he doesn't believe and he won't listen to you especially to his son you know he feels like he needs to tell me what to do you know if we do talk but it's yeah that's something that I still deal with but mm -hmm. I honestly I just pray and think that God will save him someday you know even if it's on his deathbed he's he's gonna save him I mean I'm there right there with him whenever he's ready <clears throat> That's something I've always, always dealt with. Luckily, I've had my mom and, and God to be there for me. So, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is just, you don't learn manly things. Like, you're, my mom raised me. I was raised by a woman. Look at his hair. Yeah, a long, <laughs> long girl. Your hair's too long. But like, there's, I mean, there's tons of stuff. I mean, from iron. cars <laughs> yeah. to tools, all that kind of stuff. I never had anybody teach me any of that stuff. I had to figure it out on my own or ask these guys. These guys know how to do everything. Gotcha, so they take care of me, you know? <laughs> and same with like relationship advice. It's hard to go to your mom and talk to somebody about that. You want to go to the same sex and the only person yeah. I can go to would be my dad, but I can't call him. I was just talking to these guys, but you know, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Something that's always kind of crippled me through life, but it's something that you can always deal with because I feel like you can always find, it's not like a replacement, but you can find somebody to be there in your life. God's provided and then, friends. yeah, I mean, God, God is my father and he's provided me with older brothers. I mean, these guys are a lot, a lot older than me. And come, on, kinda, come on, man. Come on, dude. dude. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's cool. It's cool how he makes, helps things to work out. So. Yeah. I think that's a great example of what kids need to see too is that you know confide in people that have had similar issues you know and so confide in people that have have, have have come down from that mountain and kind of reached that level playing ground for themselves like it's a they watch Joe you know struggle with you know you know since we've known him we, we know he, we all go through our trials and stuff and it's just cool because we can mentor him you know because like you said you know growing up not having a father you don't yeah. learn to drill holes in your drum riser and do all yeah. this thing, you know what I mean like there's just cool things that we can do and he always is always so like open to 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 help and advice and it's really cool because that's another thing too that you know guys like him a lot of times they close himself off to everything it's like I'm not willing to you know let, nobody's going to tell me what to do I'm just going to do it myself and they get this hard-headed like because you, you get so trained that that's what you, that's what you've been doing all your life well no one helped me you've been, my, my dad's been not doing here it all no, I don't need help from anybody you know and Joe's not like that, so it's cool. <clears throat> when I was when I was young, uh, I mean, I had some youth pastors off and on, but it seemed like my church yeah. always got new youth pastors, like every year. <laughs> okay. And so it's like, <laughs> never could find that person. I now have a mentor in in Nashville. His name's Milam, and he uh, I go to this Bible study every week when, when I'm there. It's it's a really cool Bible study. Um, it's for but, drummers only. Yeah, drummers. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just for touring musicians and people people nice. that tour. Yeah. Um, so it's perfectly perfect to relate to, but yeah, he's somebody I can call anytime. It's kind of cool to have that too. Yeah, so. that's, I think that's the same thing with us. Uh, me and the twins, we uh, we grew up in youth group together, and we had some awesome youth group leaders that we could just lean on. And, mm -hmm. and uh, they're still they still live in the town that we came from. Small town. Small town, and and everybody just, knows everybody. <laughs> it's amazing too, just because they they really have helped shape us and mold us when we were kids, and and. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they know exactly how much they've really impacted who we are now. Well, it's weird because we'll go we'll go home for Christmas or whatever, and our old youth leader owns a store downtown. I mean, you go into downtown Linesville, where we're from, and it's one it's one stoplight, and on both sides of the street are you know a row of stores and a row of stores, and our youth group leader Jenny owns just a you know candy kind of store or whatever, mm -hmm. and I always make it a point to go down there and say hi, you know, and you know I think that that is saying thank you you know hey you know, i appreciate what you did for me as a kid and every time we walk in the door it's like oh my boys you know yeah, yeah. 
We're She's so, so proud. proud of we're us. so proud of you guys. And <laughs> so, I mean, if it wasn't for her and our parents and, you know, our church and stuff and the other youth that we hung out with, I don't think we would, would have been shaped in the guys that we were. You might identify with Joe's story of growing up in a single parent home. Or maybe you find yourself leaning hard into a youth group or a mentor for encouragement because your family has not been there. It's so important that you know that you're not alone. And at Remedy, we exist so you can jump online right now and chat with us so we can remind you that God will never leave you nor forsake you. We want to connect you with people in your community. Drop by chatlistandlove.com right now and let's chat. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the show. As we talk about family and how it affects us in our formative years, we need to look at how experiences growing up have shaped the way we deal with life itself. I'd say for me personally, it's been a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of anger issues. Like, uh, you know, growing up, you know, we watched our families. We come from an Italian background, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of fight for supremacy in our family. And, uh, you know, um, early on, our parents had a had a terrible had a terrible uh, thing happen in their marriage, and and uh, my father was wasn't you know he wasn't exactly what you would call um, faithful to his wife, and uh, we didn't find out till we were 18 years old. But we went through you know kind of you know when we were younger, we just you know had the, we had these anger issues because we just watched our family the way they fought, the way they talked to each other, the way they you know the way they just kind of went about you know communicating, and and um, I just remember constantly dealing with that cycle and I think that you know in you know now having learned the things I've learned I feel like I, if I knew now if I knew then what I know now I feel like I could have broke the cycle I think that's something that's I've, I've continually struggled with you know in, in everyday life it's 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 a vice of mine that if something gets in my way or so, if something bothers me like my, my anger just takes over and I think that that's the highest mountain I think I've ever had to climb for sure I mean I, I never really did deal with much addiction. Um, alcohol came into the came into the picture for a while there in college for sure. Um, you know, but I think my I think even more powerful than substance abuse, it was more about anger because even when I would drink, I, I could I would get angry and I would get I would get mean and, and um, you know I would I would even deal with it in my relationships. You know, I would I would be in a relationship and I would almost want to pick a fight because I wanted to feel something. You know, I wanted to feel that that rush of aggression. You know, and I think that. For us now, being on stage, I think a lot of our fans have always, <laughs> they, 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 they say I make these faces <laughs> and I have, I, like they call them the, what do they call them? The, they got the Anthony, Anthony the, the Anthony, Twan the face. Twan, yeah. Antoine is my nickname, <clears throat> so they, they, they've shortened it to Twan, so it's this Twan face that I make. And I think that what they don't realize is that I'm, I'm on stage playing and with anger, but it's this anger that's, it's almost a righteous thing. It's like this, like, <clears throat> I'm going to defeat, I'm going to break the cycle. And, and, and I'm going to beat this because I get so swept up in the music and I get so swept up in the emotion of what the, what the songs are talking about. You know, it's, 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 it's medicine for me. And it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's really cool because I get up there and I'm a completely different person than, than you would meet off stage. You know, um, we, we may look scary off stage, but the second you approach us, we're like, you know, teddy bears and, you know, we're, we're almost like, you know, we're daddies. So we have daughters and we're just like, we know how to handle, you know, talking to people and um, for the most part. And, uh, yeah, I think, you know, anger is a very scary thing, man. There's, I think there's, you know, we've had friends that have dealt with anger issues to the point where, you know, they were, you know, thrown in jail for doing something out of anger. You know, it's a very scary thing because you, you it, it would get to this point for me where I would snap. Like I would, I would just be, a, they would almost be this polar opposite of, of, of my normal self, so to speak. And it was, you know... <clears throat> Just, I mean, I, I, specific examples. I mean, Randy and I, I think Randy and I both kind of dealt with it a little bit, but, you know, growing up, man, we really, really were aggressive kids. And, and uh, you know, we just, we'd get in fights, you know, we'd get mad, we'd punch a hole in the wall, you know, just, I mean. I know. grew up with them, so it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, we constantly watching those screaming two at each fight, other, you know. And it was, fight. I was, I mean, I never really got into a lot of, like, heated yeah. Like fights yeah, or anything with anybody, but like when when I became friends with them uh, in, in uh, high school, and they were fighting, it's like I would stand back and I'm yeah. just like, whoa. But it's for me, it's, it's like crazy. knowing, knowing that but. you know, I'm knowing the issue, knowing that, yeah. knowing that you know, that's half of it. You know what I mean? Like if you can, you know, you recognize that 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 vice and and, and pull it out of yourself any way you know how, you know, and, and and I think that when Randy, Mike, and I really started getting into music and 
and um, you know our walk with God it changed it changed us forever you know what I mean and, and I think that you know the anger now is just this like just kind of seeing what's going on around you seeing other people struggle with that kind of stuff and it's just like man yeah. it just drives me crazy you know it's like why you know and and uh, the, the righteous anger comes out in our music and I think that that's that's ultimately been <clears throat> The, the biggest thing I've ever struggled with. Yeah, and I think as guys too, just like that's something that we've pride like issues. Any person yeah. who's you know who's <clears throat> a dude who's just gonna face like I'm looking at my son uh, past couple of weeks and <clears throat> uh, he's trying to put together this little train set that he just couldn't fit the you know the two little ends <laughs> together and and then he would just, just get really he just his face would get super red and he just couldn't figure it out. Yeah. And it's just this competition that we just kind of grow up in. It's like you can't do it right away. You get ugh, just get really angry. But I, we, we watched our family. You know, like I said, we watched our family. You know, communicate the way they did. And now that I'm a father, it's like I, if I if I don't continue to to make this, you know, break the cycle. You know, if I don't continue on that path. Yeah. You know, I, I, like I said, I've already noticed things in my daughter, and she's only 19 months old. You know, I, I notice things in her that she gets these little temper tantrums and stuff. And I'm not, and I'm not seasoned as a father enough to know that it's just something you know a two-year-old does. You know, but uh, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, you know, really, really watching my step because I want my daughter to, you know, have a have a different example to follow in her her mother and father because, you know, you know, mommy and daddy can get into some pretty heated arguments because we're both, you know. Of the same mind most of the times, but, but yeah, uh, type yeah. <laughs> type but, but I mean, I've got. I mean, <laughs> I mean, one last thing though. But like, you know, as far as getting down into that valley, man. Like, once you once you reach the peak of anger, it's a it's a very quick fall, and 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 you get down there, man, and you're just you're almost you're a completely different person. You're like a monster, and and you know, it's fighting fighting that has been a, a it's a day to day thing, and and but I feel like, you know, because I've got God in my life, and I have a, a very awesome amazing group of brothers you know it's you know it's it's easy it makes it much easier and i think that's what's cool about it is that you need to surround yourself with people that are going to pull those things those demons out of you and that's these guys again we need to have people in our lives to help us deal with what life throws our way how can we help visit chatlistenlove.com right now and let us know Welcome back to the show. For some, the growing up years have a ton of painful memories that make it difficult to even forgive their family. But with God's help, we can see how the valley we walked through was for a purpose and how there's goodness at the end of the road. Yeah. For me, I didn't, I struggled with the anger, but I don't think I struggled with it as much as my brother did. Um, Anthony kind of defines it as toxic anger. And uh, I had more of an anger of, of uh, this, uh, I felt like I was putting a lot of pressure on myself, and because of that, I started becoming sure of myself. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't do things that I put my mind to. And sometimes, even to this day, you know, I, I feel like people, when people look at me, like they, they don't see a, prof they don't see a professional, or they don't, they don't think that I can do something because I'm not as good of, 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 of at something as they are. And my whole life, I've, I've always had this. I've got to, I've got to lead the way. I've got to be the guy that's taking care of everybody. And I don't know, like, I, f I got it from my mother and my father. We were too young to know that whole situation when, when um, my father was unfaithful. Uh, but luckily, my father came around, and um, he was so much a part of Anthony and I's life growing up. He was our little league coach, our Sunday school teacher. Everything we did, he was a part of. And um, when, uh, when I had. I was a, I was always the one growing up that was a, always the first to try everything. Uh, I was the, you know, there's with twins, it's always the one that tries something first. And I know, from my experience, but I'm also married to an identical twin, and my twin is the one that was the same as I was growing up. She was always the first one to try everything, and I still see to this day her her sister calls her every day because her sister just needs that confirmation from the from the one that's led the way. And I was the first to get married, I was the first to have a kid, you know, just, and uh, so. I don't know if, I was, if it was something that made me feel like I needed to do that because I was unsure of myself or I felt like I needed to prove myself, but um, I feel like God instilled that. I know now that I feel God instilled that in me because, you know, there, there needs to be leaders. There needs to be, you know, men of faith that are leading the way. And um, I remember the look on my parents' face the first time they saw my son. Um, I was the first one to have a kid. And, um, and my wife and I were renting an apartment at the time and, the first time I put my son in my father and my mother and father's arms, 
and saw this look on their face because we never had a, a great relationship with our grandparents growing up. Um, my father didn't come from a, from a great home. He had a lot of brothers and sisters and stuff on my mother's side. There was a lot of problems there too, um, you know, just with her sisters and parents. And, and, uh, but when my parents looked at, at Asher and I just knew that they wanted to be the grandparents to them that we never had. And that just brought so much joy to my heart. And even to this day, when they come for Christmas and stuff, like, like you look at me now, like it means so much to me. So I know how, how important it can be for somebody to have a family that's, you know, strong. And being out on the road, sometimes I struggle with the, the that I'm not there. You know, a lot of a lot of the, a lot of the time during the year, and I don't want that. My, I don't want my family to suffer because of that. But then. I realize that you know God is in control, and God's not going to let that happen. God's going to God's going to continue to teach me things that I take home, and you know, be, because we're out on the road, we don't we don't take things for granted when we get home. You know, when we're home, that is a precious time for us. My hope is that by hearing from the guys of Red, that you'll think about your own family background and whether good or bad, you'll ask God to help you connect the dots, so you can live differently moving forward. Remember. Unforgiveness and bitterness want to rob you of even having a future. So please, let us at Remedy help you unpack some of these experiences if they were painful. We're so blessed by our friendship with Red. Pick up their music wherever you buy yours. And thank you for joining us and being open to what God can do in your life. Live your life on purpose and not by accident. My friend, you've just had a backstage pass.